Shalom and welcome to the Rabbi's Daily Blog for the Counting of the Orma. It's day 17 of the Orma Count and we're on to our next subject now as we move into this new week. And one of the burning questions I think that we have in Judaism and one of the theological terms which Judaism has brought into existence is the concept of righteousness. One of the questions therefore being how do we get that righteousness? How do we live our Jewish lives in a way which brings that righteousness into fruition? Something we all want to be righteous, it's something we desire to be. God has called us to be righteous people and he wants us that way. How to get it, but how to have that level of righteousness which is possible is the big, big question. And of course, Judaism has, has approached this question from different angles um, through the ages. And we know um, the Lord wants us to be obedient to him. He's given his Torah commands. He gave us his commandments, the mitzvot on Mount Sinai. And these are the parameters, if you like, the, the framework within which he wants us to live, to be a righteous nation, a nation which will show the Gentiles what righteousness is, and as a nation, so to live them out, to show that there is a righteous just God, who is looking after us and, and, and looking into humanity, and who is always fair and just. But the question of righteousness is an interesting one. How do you go about doing this? Is it just a matter of keeping the commandments? How do you get that level of righteousness? Is it possible even as a human being to get it? According to King Shlomo, we've mentioned before already, he says there is none who is righteous. But I'm sure all would agree, all have fallen short of the glory of God, everyone. I don't think there's a human being out there who's ever fully kept, fully kept the righteous standards of Adonai in the midst of the commandments as he's given them. And so we end up in a situation really is, you know, how do we get this righteousness? He wants us to, and yet somehow, is there some kind of cosmic joke being played on us here that we're not aware of? Is there another way of getting this righteousness? And I think this is where, as Messianic Jews, we have a bit of an answer that Rav Shaul certainly um, worked out and understood this, and he wrote about this in his letters, how to get this righteousness. And one path out of the two options, we can either try and keep the commandments even more rigorously, even tighter, even more strictly, forever and ever, trying to tighten it up and make sure we've covered every single loophole and angle of everything which could possibly be happening within the commandments. That is one way of doing it. Honestly, I think the, the answer to that simply is you'll never end. You know, each generation of rabbis has laid another interpretation upon another interpretation upon another, extra this and extra that and extra this, just to make sure that everything is covered, and even then it's not finished. And you have to ask the question at that point, were those in previous generations not as righteous as we are? Because we've got more understanding now, therefore we are the ones who are righteous and they weren't. What about our children, their children's children when they're born? Will they be even more righteous because they'll understand more than we do? Or are we all righteous? It's just a matter of trying to work out and, and gradiate in some way our Torah observance to be righteous. It becomes crazy. And on top of that, who decides? Who has the power to decide this is exactly the way it's going to be? This, the way this commandment is, is that falling to the rabbis? Of course, the rabbis would say yes, because it's not in heaven. It's, it's us. The rabbis decide. But they're just human beings. What if they get it wrong? Imposing things on people to ascertain and, and create a level of righteousness which is serious because this is the righteousness of God we're talking about but they're just mere human beings as fallible and as sinful as anyone else in all of this and it becomes a really interesting dynamic that goes on maybe maybe there's a secret in all of this that we've not understood but I think as I said before the Rav all gets hold of and understands one of the things that we see through the, the scriptures is the name of Adonai called Adonai Tzidkenu the Lord, our righteousness. He is our righteousness. Hmm. So really what we want to try and do is to get the righteousness of Adonai down to us. We need to have his righteousness. You know, if only I had his righteousness more than me trying to be righteous. And I'm not knocking our brothers in other forms of Judaism here. Yeshua's own comments in this when he's talking about the Pharisees in the first century said that they are righteous. But it's not enough. Our righteousness, he said, must exceed those, exceed that of the Pharisees he was talking to. He was acknowledging they had a form of righteousness, but just not adequate, not enough to meet God's exacting standards. 
But now if the secret is that God himself, Adonai Tzidkin, or he is our righteousness, and he gives us his righteousness, then Lord, please, I want that righteousness. That's what I need. That's what I really crave. That is one way of guaranteeing that I know I can be righteous if he's given it to me. Or even, as the scriptures say in its own way, if it's credited to my account. Who was it who had his account credited with the righteousness of Adonai? Who was the first one that we have in the scriptures mentioned? And of course, it's Abraham. He was the progenitor, the father of our, our nation, our faith, the Jewish faith in many ways. He was the first one up over the top and it's his faith that drove him. Faith in God, faith in his ability to transform him, change his life and faith able to get inside him and, and, and take on that righteousness from Adonai. Because the scriptures say, because Abraham had faith, the Lord accounted it to him as righteous. He gave him the Lord's own righteousness in Abraham. He hadn't kept the Torah. The Torah didn't exist for another 430 years. It wasn't around. He couldn't have had that righteousness based on the mitzvot. It just simply wasn't there. As exactly Rav Shaul understands. I'm talking here, for those who know, of course, we're talking about the letter to the Jewish community in Galatia, where he specifically talks about this issue. Abraham's our model. If we want to be righteous as Jews, he is our model, our template for what Judaism should be. This is what the righteousness of God is, by faith walking, walking in faith, humbly with our God, allowing him through our faith to, to give us his righteousness and so change us. He's our righteousness, it's the only way. How to be then that righteous? What do we follow? What do we do? Is it just a free-for-all then? It's just like, no, 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 absolutely not. You see, the Torah commands is not a way of attaining life. The mitzvot doesn't help us to achieve life, that righteous standard of life. It becomes the pattern of living out righteousness once we have that faith which God has credited to our account. And who is that pattern lived out in? More than it was in Abraham. And that, of course, is Yeshua Mashikainu. Not only what he taught in the synagogues every Shabbat for three years when he was ministering 2,000 years ago in Israel. More than that, it's his lifestyle. What he did, where he went, where he didn't go, what he said and didn't say, how he acted, how he behaved, how he responded in different situations. All of this together gives us a living example of the righteousness of Adonai in, in real life, lived out in the flesh as it were before us. We could watch and observe and, and learn. See, when the scriptures describe Yeshua Mashichenu as the living Torah, he is the living Torah. If we just watch him, or from what we can do now reading through the scriptures in the Masonic writings, if we can watch him and see how he behaved, what he said, how he handled people, situations, then we'll begin to understand what that real righteousness is like. And that's the righteousness that Adonai directly implants in us, in crediting to us as his righteousness. Truly, Adonai Tzidkein, or he, is our righteousness and the only source of our righteousness, not in the flesh and not in our ability to obey, even if we could and wanted to. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.